Merry Christmas and welcome to GMI Hub Online. It's so good to be back and to, to, to have you join with us. Um, today is going to be a special, special interview with the Christmas season upon us. I know that uh, many of us are experiencing a lot of different things. We're experiencing preparation to be with family and friends and yet there are some people that may not be experiencing that same thing simply because of the season we have just gone through um, with COVID and everything else. So with me today I have a special guest where we are going to talk about um, how to help how to use music to help us through dark times how to how to help us get through a season that should be joyous but may not be for some of us because we may have lost loved ones or we're just fighting with anxiety and depression i'm very pleased to introduce lena gautier <laughs> who is a beautiful singer uh, accomplished pianist um, and and just has a heart for worship she's a worship leader as well she's a music teacher she's all things Elena. Elena, welcome to our program. Welcome. Thank you so much for having me. Not a problem. Lena, I'd love you to just share. I mean, I know I just gave kind of a little mini interview um, introduction here, but um, can you tell us a little bit how you ended up with this passion to connect music with health? Yeah, for sure. Yes. So first of all, um, you know, I am a professionally, you know, classically trained uh, musician. I'm, I'm a, my background is as an opera singer and pianist, and I've been teaching music for almost 35 years now. And um, that dates me a little bit. And um, I also have on the other side of things, I have also a Bachelor of Theology. And so I've been um, a Bible teacher, a ministry, a women ministry leader, and I do have, you know, ministry. And so uh, this interest um, for music and um, health uh, came well, I think it, it, it was something that was gradual, but then it kind of uh, converged into a big uh, dramatic event that happened to me in 2017. And so for me as a worship minister and worship coach, I've been, um, you know, using worship, leading worship, um, studying worship and teaching the theology of worship for many years. Um, but when I faced a dramatic health crisis uh, where I had um, just really terrible uh, neurological reactions in my neck and head, my neck paralyzed, um, you know, I went through a very, very difficult time where my whole body started reacting, having like systemic reactions to uh, either tests or medications or supplements that were given to me. It was a very scary time it was terrifying nobody was able to find what it was and um, I felt really kind of left to my own devices with no answers nothing to um, hold on to was put on bed rest for two months uh, complete bed rest was out of commission not even able to drive a car for uh, close to six months um, and uh, during this time of crisis, um, coming into it, of course, we never know when a crisis is going to happen. This is why it's a crisis. <laughs> but um, I was coming into a time where I was very, very busy professionally and in ministry. So already my plate was overloaded. So I was already operating on a level of stress that was quite high um, that I was kind of barely managing. But when all of these um, situations happen with my body and neurologically and all these on, you know, explain reactions that were very scary, um, started unfolding. It just kind of tipped me over into, um, a, an anxiety disorder, into a depression and into daily panic attacks, several panic attacks, severe panic attacks every day. It was a, terrible, terrible time in my life. And uh, because I was not able to be uh, helped really medically, then I had to turn to what I knew, which was worship and which was my relationship with God. And so from this, actually through my own experience, plus my, you know, learned background, uh, plus 
what I'm doing, it all kind of converged into uh, using worship to uh, help with mental health. And so since then, of course, I have been able to, um, you know, overcome and heal from the, the, the depression, the panic attacks, the anxiety disorder. And now, you know, to God's glory, I'm able to help a lot of people. And I love to do that. I love to be able to, to help them. So, so wow, like that, that's amazing that you went through all of that. Um, now, you said you turned to worship, you've turned to music. Now, of course, because you're an accomplished musician, did you find you had to go into actually singing and playing the music yourself, as in playing the piano, or did it, was it just about listening to music? How did it start for you? Yeah, that's a very good question, actually, Cheryl. Is, um, I, well, it started with the fear of losing my mind. And I want to address this because um, I know that if I went through this, other people also have gone through this, are going through this, might go through this. Um, you know, the, the times that we live in right now are very difficult times. They're, they're, they're much harder even than back in, you know, 2017. When I went through this in 2018, it was a, an ordeal that lasted over a year, a year and a half. And... Um, and so, um, you know, the, that fear of losing my mind was so strong. You know, um, when you face uh, battles with uh, mental health and other things that you cannot explain, and it's just the, that feeling of helplessness and that feeling of hopelessness can be really overwhelming. And for me, um, you know, it was uh, my mind, my brain, being able to learn, being able to, to do all these things. Um, you know, I've always been like a bookworm and always, you know, uh, top of my class, top of my school. So my being able to rely on my brain and my cognitive functions and all of this was really important. And, you know, we don't really think about it until we're really affected, you know, with this. And, and um, so I'm just thinking about the Proverbs that says, the spirit of a man will sustain him in times of sickness. And that was the thing is that, you know, sometimes you can be sick physically, but if your mental is strong, and when I say your mental, I, 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 I just want to, include in this also your your spiritual life your emotional life if mentally spiritually emotionally you are strong you are grounded then you will be able to bear uh you know very difficult things you know we think about people you know overcoming cancer and all of this and and they have uh, incredible attitudes but when you're affected mentally that's the thing that, that the second part of of that scripture says but a broken spirit who can bear and this is the thing is when we're affected mentally, when we're affected emotionally, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's unbearable. And that fear of losing my mind actually, um, I think came uh, on one day when um, the doctor uh, tried to um, give me some medication and I had a strong reaction to that medication. I had hallucinations from hell. And I thought at this moment, this is it. I'm, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm never going to be the person that I've been all these years. And I'm going to end up in the psych ward. And I don't know. I was really, really scared. And so I turned, being a musician, being a singer, of course, I turned to, um, you know, going on the piano. And because I already knew as a worship leader, I have seen, you know, I have been involved in leading worship for deliverances. I have been involved in uh, leading worship, seeing, you know, the effect that it has on people, the effect that it has hit, had on myself, right? Like uh, when, we, when we congregate and we worship together, I'm sure it happened to you, Cheryl, and to people listening. And you go to church and you may feel down, down. you may have had a fight at home. You, you know, something may have happened, maybe, I don't know, whatever kind of issue. And then you arrive and then you're into this atmosphere of congregational, you know, praising God. And then you engage into worship. And then suddenly there's really a change that happens. And so knowing this, having done that for now 20 years, um, you know, um, I, I, that was the recourse that I went. I thought the one way right now to stay sane will be to praise God. 
Because if I praise God, then I will be, you know, speaking right things about him. I will be calling on his name. The Bible tells us in Romans, right? Whoever calls on the names of on the name of the Lord shall be saved, right? Uh, we have tons of Psalms where David in his uh, distress said, you know, why are you cast down on my soul? Put your hope in God. You know, I will call upon the Lord, you know, that the Lord hears the cries of the righteous. You know, all of these scriptures were there to back up my, you know, uh, inclination, my desire, that, that, that prompting that I had to go at the piano and to just start praising the Lord singing. And so, uh, you know, for me, this is how it happened. But we see also from studies that um, even just listening to music has a lot of benefits. And so there's, there's listening to music and then there's playing music and making music, which is two things. And the Bible is very clear about us singing. You know, there's a lot of scriptures in Colossians talking about, you know, um, you know uh, singing, speaking to each other. Um, letting the word of god dwells richly in us you know um and and singing where's my scripture here um singing unto the lord making melody one to another speaking to one another in psalms and spiritual songs and so <clears throat> you know the bible tells us in the book of psalms right again as long as i live i will sing unto the lord i will praise the lord so we're commanded to sing with instruments also. And so there's there's this also. This this is a command. And God gives us this command because it's for our benefit. It's for our benefit. It benefits us spiritually, but it benefits us also um, mentally. And so uh, they have found that even in people listening to music, for example, it really affects the brain. And we now, we now know that the brain there's, uh, has neuroplasticity, which means that the brain can change, can adapt. You know, circuits, neural pathways can be created, can be abandoned. And so um, this is a beautiful thing, is that when I praise the Lord, uh, you know, I'm speaking things that are right and true about him. I'm renewing my mind, as Romans 12 said. I'm renewing my mind. You know, you can renew your mind with all sorts of things, but the Bible is very clear about the benefits of using God's words and the necessity of using God's words because God's word is truth. You know, God's word is sanctify us, right? And so these are the things that, that you know when you praise god you do and so um even listening to worship music let's say that you are not a musician right and so um you know putting on worship music that you love that is uh, songs that really appeal not just to your emotions but they declare the truth of the word of god because that's something you know uh, music affects our emotions so much that you can actually listen to music and it's going to make you feel down and then and then you can listen to music that is going to energize you and this is proven actually they have done you know different studies about that it it actually affects your uh, neurotransmitters you know your hormones inside it affects cortisol it brings cortisol down um you know it affects also oxytocin which is actually the 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 neurotransmitter that binds us together it's it's actually what they call the love drug of the or the sex hormone actually it's the same what listening to music has the same kind of effect on oxytocin. Um, it also affects your level of dopamine, right? And so um, music has benefits all over, uh, you know, that they can measure already from a, from a medical scientific point of view. And so no wonder that God is a musical God and that God invites us and commands us actually to make music unto him he himself is a musical god and this is the beautiful thing and i'm kind of going into another um another you know thing here but just to continue on my on my train of thought is you know we have been made in the image of god and god is a musical god god sings right zephaniah 3 tells us that god rejoices over us with singing that is amazing when you think about that you know god sings that when god job 38 tells us that when god created the whole of everything the sons of god the stars of the morning sang 
right? They have even measured, um, you know, now that the universe emits, they say that there's it's a song of the universe. And, and I don't know if it, you can actually uh, Google that and search this and listen to this. The universe emits music. And so this is just amazing, you know, when I think about that. So um, using, uh, you know, music to heal, music uh, to really affect your mood is just, I mean, there's no, there's no wrong side effect, you know, it's very cheap, <laughs> you know, and, and it just has positive benefits. So, I mean, you can't go wrong with this, right? That's, that's my take. So I'm going to ask you this, does style of music matter? in this case when it comes to music being used I, I, you did say it's music that 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 portrays the word of god now some people automatically have a frame of mind that the music has to have a certain sound a certain style in order to um affect our our, our mood do you find that as well do you find a style of music has anything to do with it or is it just whatever works for the individual that's what would work for them to help them through their process so well you know there are studies that show that classical music actually has been many many benefits um some studies even have focused uh, solely on the music by mozart and they have found that plants uh, grow faster that milk uh, cows produce uh, more milk you know with uh, mozart's music and so there's a lot of um, a lot of these studies that have been done have been done with classical music um and so there's there's you know quite the merit to that uh you know listening to classical music listening to instrumental music is different again than listening to music with um lyrics now one thing that i want to say and i must say this as a bible teacher and worship minister is that the kind of music that we listen does matter now do i mean that it needs to be only organ music and only you know the good oldies that's not what i'm saying but we, we need because music has a very spiritual component to it uh, when you think about Lucifer, for example, right? When you read in the Bible about Lucifer, you see that Lucifer was made, that inside of him there were pipes and there were, you know, organs, that he had this ability to make music, that he was appointed, right, as the highest angel, absolutely beautiful, um, lots of splendor, uh, there worshiping the Lord. And so when he fell, um, you know, uh, his anointing is still with him, meaning that, you know, th the way that he was built and his capacities are still there with him. Um, and so Satan uses music a lot to draw worship to himself. Satan is after worship. If you remember, uh, you know, Jesus in the desert um, and Satan said, I'm going to give you everything all these kingdoms everything all these riches it all belongs to me because he's the god of this world and right now that you know that he's he's over these things um and he says i'm gonna give you all of these things if you do what if you bow down and worship me satan is always after worship satan uses a lot of contemporary artists who are willingly most of the time willingly uh, sell their souls to the devil. And that's the truth. Um, they, they get into all sorts of rituals, art, all sorts of cults and, you know, associations to get fame, to get riches. Uh, and Satan will gladly give that in exchange for their soul, in exchange for worship. And so we need to know um, now the source of what we're listening to. Are the composers or those who have, you know, created these songs, you know, do they have a relationship with God or are they into other things? You know, is the song that I'm writing right now praising the Lord or is it praising the devil? Is the song that, and, and sometimes it may not be, you know, as obvious as praising the devil when I say this, but is the song that I'm right, that I'm listening to talking about things that the Bible condemns? And if you think about worldly secular music right now uh all the songs talk about things that the bible condemns right so 
uh, anything that would be sex outside of marriage. <laughs> and you have a lot of the songs that talk about that, right? Both new songs and old songs. Um, the Bible condemns that. Should I listen to this? No, I should not listen to this. So it's not just, you know, of course, the studies that have been done, they're not, you know, Christian studies. And so they, they although they have done studies and scans of the brains of people praying, and people worshiping and seeing how, how different sections of the brain light up. And it's really interesting to see. Um, but for us, we have a spirit that is alive unto God. We have the Holy Spirit inside. And we are to not defile ourselves by putting things that are from the enemy. And we need to have that discernment because I think that the enemy has really taken a stronghold in the church through entertainment. And I know that some people may say, well, you know, you're pushing it really a lot. Really? I don't think so. Because Jesus said that whatever we watch, right, affects our heart. He says to the man, he says, if you just look at a woman with lust, you know, you have already committed adultery. And so he's talking about what comes through the eye gate, what comes through the ear gates. The Bible is full of, of proverbs about gossiping, hearing a gossip, how hearing a gossip goes down like truffles into a pig, right? So not good things. It, it goes and it's like bringing death. So the eye gate, the ear gates are really, really uh, important. They're conduits for the enemy to attack us. And so when we listen to music, of course, we're using our ear gates. And because music uh, creates and, and awakens in us such an emotional response, at all levels in the brain and in our emotions and spiritually uh, the music that we submit ourselves to the music that we allow inside of us is you know makes the whole difference so we have to whatever the genre you know and again i think that some things are just not redeemable you know i i don't think that you can really redeem death metal you know, um, I, I don't think death metal is a kind of genre of music that brings any kind of glory to God or is not bringing life. It's called death metal. So, you know, uh, but so we have to use that discernment. We have to use that discernment is is what I'm listening to right now. Building up my spirit is what I'm listening to in line with the word of God is what I'm listening to coming from people who do have a relationship with God, who have walked a walk and out of this walk, they, they have birthed that song and now they're presenting this as a good fruit of their walk with the Lord. These are things that are very important and that could be the same for movies, right? We could talk a lot about the eye gates and movies and what we're watching. Is the movie that I'm watching right now portraying something and, and am I being entertained right now by things that, you know, the Lord condemns? Would Jesus sit with me and watch that movie? And these are good mm. questions to ask because you know what? All these things do affect our mental health. And oftentimes people don't look at mental health until they're on the other side, just like what I did, right? I knew I was stressed. I knew I was just running it at the very highest speed that I could run it, but I thought I would be okay. I thought I could just bulldoze through until the Lord just knocked me off. You know, he allowed that. He allowed that. He allowed me to be completely knocked off and not depending on my own strength and seek him in a way that I that I never did before. And then all these things now it became really, really clear to me that my mental health matters to God and everybody's mental health matters to God because he wants us to have the mind of Christ. He wants us to have a sound mind, right? And so we can claim these scriptures, but if we feed our minds garbage through what we watch, through what we hear, through the words we speak and the conversations we entertain, then we are really affecting our mental health. And, you know, there's no amount of claiming scripture that's going to change that if your habits are unhealthy. So, mm -hmm. if, wow. 
Hey, if you're just joining us right now, uh, you're watching GMI Hub online, and our guest with us today is Lena Gauthier. Lena Gauthier is an accomplished singer, musician, music teacher, uh, worship leader, Bible teacher, and we're talking about music and mental health, how, how music can affect mental health, how music can be used to benefit me mental health, and how music can affect me mental health even in the negative way. If you want to learn more about GMI Hub, certainly go visit us on our website, gmihub.ca, where you will learn about all the different episodes that we're running here at GMI Hub Online, plus any projects that we're working on. You may know that we had recently launched a Christmas CD. Uh, speaking of music, <laughs> we have launched a Christmas CD, which is actually a compilation of original music from artists right across Canada. We actually launched that back in October. Uh, but it's not too late. I know it's days before Christmas, uh, but you can go ahead and you can go to gmihub.bandcamp.com to get your copy of that music. And hopefully that will be a positive <laughs> for your mental health. Now, back to Lena. Um, okay, so, so from what you were saying earlier, Lena, music has a, is, is a strong... Um, it, I won't say a weapon, but it, it's, it's a strong entity. I mean, like you said, music can can um, lift us up. It can help us deal with anxiety. It can help calm us down. I mean, I, I go back to the story. You were talking about biblical references, and I thought about Saul and David. And I thought about when King Saul was going through his mental um, anxiety and depression, and he had some issues that he had to deal with. And there was David coming in with, at that time, a harp, and when he played the harp, it seemed to calm King Saul down. And, I mean, it didn't heal him. I mean, he, ha he still had his issues, right? But, but that music calmed him down. And, of course, David wrote a lot of music as well um, that helped him actually express de several different types of emotions. Sometimes he was super happy and joyous and praising God. There were other times when he was going... God, I'm mad at these enemies. Can you just knock them out? <laughs> you know. And there were other times when um, he just he wanted. It seemed like he was trying to encourage even other people. Um, music, uh, because music is so powerful. Um, it's you know I don't Christians can call it a weapon, um, and and you also mentioned that it also can be used to to bring someone else down so so now in other words if someone is, is, is spiraling with with depression if they're not listening to the right stuff um whether it's the message behind it or whatever it can also spiral someone down in their in their i guess their situation or their mental situation so i guess now we've talked about the positive effects of music we've talked about um, what music can do and how we need to be discerning on what music we listen to. Let's talk about um, some of the projects you're working on. Because I know that this is a passion for you. Yep. <laughs> this is a passion. Is. We want to teach people. Yeah, so, so tell us what some of the things that, that you're working on to help other people. Because there are artists that do fight um, depression and anxiety on a regular basis and they do use music whether they're writing and creating it or whether they're just listening to it but they do use music to help them through this I personally haven't gone through the depression and anxiety but I can only imagine the ebbs and the flows so but what you you have a project or you have some projects that are coming up to help people with anxiety and depression so why don't you share a little bit more about that yes i'll share i'll share about the the project but i want to come back on on a few things that you said and then i'm going to talk about my project because every time i talk about Sounds you good. know <laughs> worship and mental health i always get it seems like every time i talk about it i get even more passionate about it and it's because every time you dig into it there's just so much and i and i just wanted to, you talked about music being a weapon so what i want to say is um, what the Bible says is that praise is a weapon. Praise is a weapon. So the word of God is our sword. And when we praise, we use the sword of the word of God combined with 
you know, the power, the emotional response that it does, mu that music does. And so we combine this together. And, and as I praise God, I enthrone him. I speak what is right about him. I renew my mind as well. Right. When I praise God, I speak truth. And and that's the, 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 the thing sometimes that people have a hard time doing. Right. And uh, if if anybody is watching and, and is a worship leader, you know that on Sunday morning, you have seen those that have just decided that they're not going to praise the Lord. <laughs> just, you know, uh, you see it in the face, in the countenance. It really is, you know, um, we need to learn to just, you know, lift up these people and continue praying, the, praising the Lord and just leaving them, you know, to the, to the care of the Lord. But because what happened is that when I praise God and I start saying these things that are truth, but they may not necessarily line up with my emotions. And so now there's this like fighting with like my circumstances are screaming something. My emotions make me feel something. And then now with my mouth and with my brain, I'm saying that God is good, that God is faithful, that God is near and all of these things. And it's like, whoa, wait a second. You know, that doesn't make sense, right? But this is exactly where we have to pursue. And this is something that I did. You know, the, the Lord told me, Lena, your recovery is going to be long because we have so much rewiring of your brain to do. But I will be with you and I will help you and I will show you how to do it. And then after that, I will remove the sting of what you've been through. And then you're going to be able to be a blessing to many people. And this is what I'm going to be actually teaching one of the things that I'm going to be teaching in our upcoming worship and mental health webinar. So that is the one thing right now. Well, one of the many things that I'm working on. And so we're looking right now into a date, but we already have a page to sign up. And so I, and I know that this is going to be put on the screen, but I'm just going to say it. So it's triple W dot worship word lena l e n a dot com slash worship and mental health so so triple w dot worship word lena dot com slash worship and mental health and this is the page to register for that webinar in that webinar actually you're going to learn about the power of music the power of worship and the power of god's word and how they work all together and uh, actually, I have uh, here, you know, so, um, and the power of a renewed mind. So basically, we're going to dig deeper into how music affects our brain specifically. Then we're going to talk about what the Bible says about a lifestyle of worship. Because some people think that worship is just putting a worship CD on, or worship is just when I go to church and I sing a song. Worship is a lot more than that. It involves a lot more when we want to renew our mind. And so, uh, and then we're going to talk about how we develop a lifestyle of worship and how to use God's word to bring healing and to bring wholeness. And it is possible. I want to say it. It is possible. Uh, you know, they have seen even with uh, people with dementia, people with schizophrenia, um, you know, really amazing, amazing results. And so this is just music alone. This is just music alone. Think about when you're using worship, when you're bringing God's word, right? The Bible tells us that God's word is life, life, it's life. And so I bring that into, you know, into my life, into my mind, into my health. I'm speaking these things. And so it's not magic. It's not witchcraft. It's totally biblical. This is what David did, right? And, and you were talking about Saul and David. And, you know, the Bible is very clear that they were saying that Saul was tormented by a spirit. And they were using music. They were looking for a musician, an anointed musician, to play music so that the spirit would depart. And so that just tells you the weight. Music is a carrier. It's a carrier of the anointing. It does something. It just, it, everything in us responds to this. And so David was anointed, anointed musician. He was not any kind of musician. Again, which brings me back to my point. We need to watch out 
who we listen to, right? And and who are our you know idols and stuff like that. But he was an anointed musician. He was somebody who had a close relationship with the Lord. He had he had his worship time alone on the mountain with the sheep that nobody knew but God knew. And then he was able to bring him to the forefront because he's like, this man knows me. This man knows how to enter into my presence. This man knows how to abide in my presence and how to pull on, you know, my goodness and my faithfulness. And so that's amazing. So David would start playing and then the spirit would depart, right? And then after that, you know, the spirit would come back and he would he would fight again you know to, so there's this aspect of deliverance also through also through music which is amazing uh, if you have done any kind of spirit led worship and you've been into a um a church where you know there's deliverance there's you know these things that are done you will know the importance of music while this is happening it's music is a carrier and not only this but music is also in heaven right? Music is in heaven. We hear people singing in heaven. We know that there are at least harps and trumpets in heavens from the book of Revelation. You know, uh, we see, you know, people singing around the throne of God. It's just amazing, you know, just uh, extraordinary. So the webinar is going to come soon. People need to sign up for this. Uh, and, and when they sign up and when they register for the webinar, once we send all the details, um, you're going to receive also a freebie and so we love freebies and and it's a freebie but it's it's something that's called the seven ways to choose joy and so this is going to be really um exciting to have seven ways to choose joy basically because you know we have to choose joy you, you, you know at some point you have to make a decision and not go with the emotions you know it, because emotions can change you know we need to lead our heart we need to lead our mind and we need to you know, lead our emotions and not, you know, oftentimes they say, follow your heart. I mean, sometimes it's not always the best way because the heart is deceitful about all things, right? Then later on with this will come uh, the book that will follow the webinar, which is called Worship Pills. And that title of Worship Pills came when I had nothing else but worship and the word of God to rely on for my recovery and it was a friend of uh, a friend of ours who's also you know who was at the time a, a mentor of mine and somebody really dear in my life somebody in health as actually a, a doctor and he said well Lena, you're not able to receive all these other medications but you know what works for you you know you and 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 so this is how we coined the term you know worship pills um and so uh, there's also uh, for people who would want to, uh, I do a lot of things. And so for people who would want to receive a daily, uh, weekly encouragement, um, and there's something that comes that I publish every week that's called Love God Better. And it's a worship devotional and a Bible study. And uh, this is, you know, free people can subscribe and they will receive a relevant teaching about a topic, you know, that really matters to our walk with the Lord. Everything, every topic is chosen so that we walk closer to, with the Lord. And right now we are in a series actually that brings us into Advent, which is called uh, Be Spiritually Prepared for the Times Ahead. And that goes hand in hand with mental health because the times ahead if we read our bible unfortunately it doesn't get it get worse because it, before it gets better and so if we read revelation we know where we are in the timeline and how things are unfolding we need to prepare ourselves for this we need to be not just stocking up cans of beans and you know pasta in the cupboards but we need to also stock up on god's word we need to fill ourselves up fill our spirits up and know how to you know, have a hold of our minds to always be in that mind of Christ. So that is a series and we're going through the 10 R's of being ready for Jesus return. So yeah, alliteration right there, all R's, you know, 10 R's of being ready for <laughs> Jesus return. And so people also can go and visit my website, worshipwordlena.com slash love God better. And they will be able to register for that as well uh, if they want to sign up for this and of course if they want to join me in worship because 
I love talking about worship, but I love to worship and I do quite a bit of it. And so they can find me also on Facebook, Worship and the Word with Lena. That's the Facebook.com, the handle at Worship Word Lena. So I think if they visit my website and then they sign up for the webinar, they go and they follow and they like the ministry, the Facebook ministry page and can worship along together, you know, then you know, that's great. And then if uh, some people are there and uh, they would like to um, ha do just like we're doing right now and have me uh, address them, come and speak at their church or lead worship for their event or whatever it is, then they can always contact me. And I, I, I just love to do that. That's my ministry. And I just give praise to, you know, I just give praise to God for it. You know, I just I bless him for it. <laughs> If you have Lena, you get a two-in-one deal. You get the singer, you get the, <laughs> and then you get the worship. <laughs> well, that's why it's message. called Worship in, in the Word with Lena, right? That's why it's called Worship yeah. in the Word with Lena. Um, that's why I call the ministry like that. But, um, <clears throat> you know, you cannot separate because Jesus talked, you know, to worship in spirit and in truth. And there's a lot of great teachings about that, worshiping in spirit and in truth. And so when we worship in truth, you know, John 17, 17 tells us, Jesus said, you know, uh, Father, sanctify them by the truth. Your word is truth. And so uh, if we are to worship in truth, you cannot have worship in truth apart for, from God's word. And that's why I was talking about choosing songs that are accurate biblically, because nowadays you have you know, thank God you have a great, great variety of songs of every different kind of styles, you know, that you can really find yourself and find something that really speaks to you and ministers to you. Um, but we still need to be aware because some songs, not all worship songs are created equal. I would say that some songs have more merit than others. Some songs really are, are scriptural. They're more biblical. Um, you know, they, and other songs are more kind of focused on emotions and suppositions and stuff like that so we have to be we have to be careful when it comes to worship you know what we what we choose there all right wow <laughs> well this has been uh this has been a whole uh wonderful um array of information um, but as, I just wanted to touch on one more thing, though. I know we've talked about mental health. I know we've talked about depression. We focus more on depression and anxiety. But I know at the start of the program, I also mentioned um, or alluded to the possibility of dealing with grief. And the reason for yes. that is going through um, uh, COVID the way we did. There are many yeah. people that are watching or could be watching right now that, you know, even if they're having the family gathering, they're still one missing plate or one empty chair because they've lost a loved one. Some people that have lost loved ones saying, okay, well, um, you know, they've lived a long life then, but we still miss them. And there are others that unfortunately they've lost people they didn't expect to lose, sons yeah. and daughters and grandchildren and so forth. And music can have the same positive effect even in the grieving stages. Lena, I don't know if you've gone through this, but can you um, comment on that at all? How can people use the music at least to help them through this grieving process? Yes, well, you know, this is really a great question here and a great point that you're making, especially now in this time of Christmas. You know, um, we know that when, um, you know, people people have lost because of the season that we're in, you know, people have lost loved ones for a variety of reasons. And um, some of them also have lost people where, um, you know, people have decided to not see each other anymore. People, you know, it has it has been a dividing wedge, you know, this 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 whole thing. And so there's a lot of different grief. There's a grief of if somebody has died. Um, there's the grief of, of people, of, of things also that have died. Some people have lost homes, businesses, jobs, you know, uh, different things due to the whole situation and everything around it and all the circumstances and all the decisions that people are forced to make. And so there's a lot of grieving that is happening on different levels, right? Some people have uh, loved ones that are in other countries or any part and they cannot go and visit them. 
right? And so uh, uh, you have a variety of people that that may be grieving this Christmas season. And, um, you know, when, when David was grieving, uh, he always turned to God. He always turned to God. And, and I will say this, uh, I lead a, a group on Telegram, um, and this was uh, what I was exhorting them with, is that when we have, and I think all of us, um, we have our waves of overwhelm that come from time to time. Some days it's just the news and everything is just overwhelming. And some news that we learn or other people that we lose or um, things, opportunities, or, you know, life is not the same as it was. And I don't think it will go back to what it was, quite frankly. Um, and so because of that, we have to grieve. But, you know, uh, it's very important that when that wave of overwhelm comes and when that wave of sadness comes and with it can be that you can have anger, you can have frustration, you can have bitterness, you can have hate, you can have unforgiveness, you can have all of these things all kind of mixed together into this cocktail. Um, some people may feel, well, you know, I cannot allow myself to get undone and just, you know, come, you know, off at the seams. Uh, I need to just keep this bottled up or, or under control or change my mind or flip through the TV, the channels and all of this. Well, there is no ignoring or suppressing of things like that that is going to be good for your mental health. What you need to do is come to the Lord and bring all of these things to God really honestly and frankly and candidly and as messy as it may get before the Lord, just like David did. And I did that too. You know, when I was in, um, and we talked again about the anxiety, the fear, but in these times of overwhelm and coming to the Lord and you know, crying and trying to sing and praise the Lord and play the piano and then stop and blow my nose and then, you know, uh, you know, start back again. And the process of coming to God in healing worship can be very messy. I would say it's always messy, but it's good. It's a good messy. It's kind of like a divine demolition kind of thing that the Lord does where he takes us all apart and then puts all us all back together and so when david was grieving whether he was grieving because people were attacking him when he grieved because you know saul died or whenever he was grieving he encouraged himself in the lord he went and he started with pouring his heart and then what do we see in these psalms we see the first part of the psalm is always god pour you know david pouring his heart and just saying it as it is and just saying you know just kill them all lord and just whatever you want to do and just kind of that overwhelm of emotion and grief being there but then what does he do he turns to the lord and then he chooses he says i i'm choosing to focus on you and your goodness and your faithfulness and surely you will hear me and surely you will deliver me and surely you are my refuge and you are my rock and so this is the healthy way to deal with grief and using worship for this is amazing. Use songs that, that speak to you in your situation and let the Lord do this work. Come before the Lord, come before the altar of the Lord in worship and, and humble yourself and just say, God, these are the things that I'm struggling with right now. These are the things that are overwhelming. Me. These are the things that, you know, I, I wish this or I wish that, and you know, I hate this or I hate this person or, or I hate you, you know, Sometimes we may have strong feelings like that if, if we have lost somebody really close in an unexpected way and we feel that the situation is so unjust. God is well able to handle any kind of emotion that we have. And the one thing that he wants is for us to be transparent and vulnerable and come before him and just say it as it is, right? Because the Bible tells us that it is him who works in us both to will and to do according to his good pleasure. He's working on our mind. As we come and we, we are uh, honest and completely open before him, and we say, this is what I'm dealing with. And then God does a beautiful work. He does a beautiful work. That's the healthy way to do it. And so you can use, um, you can use 
uh, songs, worship songs, or Christmas music. Christmas, I love Christmas music. You know, I just, I just love Christmas carols. I'm actually going to be uh, leading this true um, uh, a caroling event at Nathan Phillips Square, uh, December 11th, from 12 until 3. And I'm really looking forward to all carols, all Jesus focused, right? And so. Um, there's just so much merit in Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer. So, but I'm talking about, you know, even using the carols of the seasons, you know, and all of these things, joy to the world, the Lord has come and silent night and all these beautiful uh, carols, you can use them and think about the greater truths that are in them. You know, the, the ultimate truth of Christmas is Jesus came, not for people who had it all together, not for special Christmas, uh, you know, gatherings and celebrations but he came to a broken world he came so that we could have life he came to bring healing he came for those who are poor in spirit he came right for those who mourn he came for all these people and so um the the time of christmas is a beautiful time to lay a hold of a jesus of a god who made himself near to us and near to our brokenness Wow, that's wonderfully put. Wow. <laughs> so for all of you who are watching again, uh, if you're just tuning in right now, you're watching GMI Hub online uh, with special guest here, Lena Gauthier, who is an accomplished musician, who is an uh, opera singer, piano player, piano teacher, Bible teacher. I can go on. <laughs> and basically, though, she has a very big heart for uh, music and mental health and the, the value of music when it comes to handling and dealing with mental health and anxiety and just now you would have probably heard her speaking about how to handle grief um, again if you want to learn more about GMI Hub please go to our website gmihub.ca feel free to join the community where you can be on the up and up on the projects that we are working on and and uh, the different uh, guests that we will be having we want to be here to help you and we'd love to hear from you about uh, what we're doing and what you would like to see us do what would you like us to cover um, we want to we're, we're here to encourage the gospel music community and this is just one of those areas where you know we want to get real we want to get real i mean not everybody's on in the not on all not everyone is on the same plane um, we're all dealing with something and especially a season like this, a season like Christmas, which typically in the movies is happy and joyous. Sometimes we're on the other side looking at going, I wish it could be happy and joyous for me. I'm hoping that as you heard Lena spoke that, speak that uh, you got encouraged that there is still hope and the grit, the uh, it's going to say the grass is always greener on the other side, but if you're in Canada, the snow can still stay white, even if there's yellow and brown spots in it. So, you know, so just just um, know that, that you can um, find hope. And even if you don't feel like it, and that's one of the things that Lena basically talked about, she referred to renewing of the mind, but it simply means this. Sometimes you don't feel like you want to hear or you want, don't want to feel like you want to, uh, speak the word you don't feel like worshiping but there are times when you know that even if your emotion or your heart is not in it your mind is saying you know this is the right thing to do so I'm, I'm hoping that you are encouraged with this again if you want to connect with Lena uh, she's she's quoted three websites we are going to put them in our, our in our comments below and if you have any questions for Lena, I believe Lena, uh, can they contact you through your website? Yes, as well? I think I think if they just go on my website, everything is there. It's worshipwordlena.com. So worshipwordlena.com, and on the page they will find uh, my contact information. They will find how to stay in touch with me, uh, how to sign up for the worship and mental health webinar, which is going to be coming very soon. Um, they can find how uh, also sign up for the online Bible course coming up. Uh, you are God's masterpiece, which talks about our identity and who God says we are, which is also very important for our mental health. 
and uh, um, they can sign up for Love God Better. Everything is there. So worshipwordlena.com. Uh, they can find everything there. They can email me directly from there. Wonderful. Well, Lena, thank you so much for being a guest. You're just, you're just a beautiful person. Thank you so much for being <laughs> here the Lord. and for sharing your heart regarding this. And, and I thank you viewers for watching us. Um, I want you all to have a great Christmas and remember, or a great holiday season, and remember that GMI Hub is here to worship, uni uh, worship <laughs> to, for, to encourage unity, community, mentorship, and talent growth. Have a great holiday season. We'll see you next time.